In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own custom click to reveal interaction with force navigation. One of the things that's really got me excited about the all new Adobe Captivate is the ability to very easily build these advanced interactions. That really doesn't require a lot. A lot of stuff can be duplicated and of course, uh, you can deal with things like force navigation without having to use variables and things like that. So today's tutorial, I'm going to show you kind of a cool looking click to reveal, simple four step click to reveal, which will reveal the next button when it's done. And of course, the best part, of course, is that you can add audio to each one of the clicks. Let's get started. First thing I want to do is start off with configuring the slide itself. I have a background image that I wish to use here. So I'm going to go over to my properties inspector and change the slide background from a solid fill into an image. It's going to prompt me to add my image from one of two places, either the assets library or my system. And I'll choose system in this case. because I have something already in mind on my computer. So we'll click on open and that will fill the background with our image here. I am going to edit the image because I have something sort of in mind for how the layout will be. I'm going to choose a crop that's uh, going to put this woman on the left hand side of my page and to fix the issue that you're seeing here with the tablet and smartphone view. I'm just going to make sure that the focus is on the left hand side there and we can just kind of play around with this a little bit here to make sure that it looks good on all views. I think that looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and press save. We're going to start to add some blocks to this particular slide. The first block I need is a paragraph block. I only need the title, so I'm going to unselect the body and I'm going to copy and paste my text that I have planned for this and I'll paste that right in there. Right off the bat, I can see that there's some contrast issues here. So I'm going to actually put a background color in this particular block there. So we're just going to change this from not being selected. We're going to choose solid fill and I will choose white, but I'm going to make it a little bit transparent so we can kind of see through it there. The font itself is a little too large for what I have in mind. And I'm not a fan of serif fonts myself, but I'm going to choose one of the Google fonts that's available, DM Sans. We'll choose a weighting that's a little bit heavier, maybe the Semi Bold 600. And I'm going to drop this font size down to, let's say, 36. I'm going to do the same thing for tablet view, make it also 36. And for smartphone view, 36. That looks good. The next block I need to add is a interactive component, specifically the radio group here. I'm going to add a background card so that we can clearly see what's on the screen there. I'm going to turn off the label. I don't need that. And I am going to go under card here and get rid of that drop shadow. I'm not a fan of those. With the radio group selected, I can actually do a couple of things here. The first thing I need is four radio buttons, not two. So I'm going to increase that there. And the thing I'm going to look at, first of all, is the radio button itself. So I'm not going to have a solid fill. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn off the border, which is going to get rid of the outline around the radio button itself. So you'll see that there. And if we go into the states view of this particular group, we can go and first of all, disable hover. I don't need that in this case here, but let's take a look at selected. Selected will show us an example of the radio button selected. I'm going to change this to a check mark rather than the radio button, just to make it look a little different here. As far as the layout is concerned, we can adjust this so that it doesn't interfere with our background image too much. I'm going to reduce this down to 70% and we can literally drag this off to the side here so that it doesn't block our character as much as it would. It's not going to be perfect for tablet and smartphone view, 
but we could also address that by maybe making the card a little bit transparent as well. So let's do that. We'll go in here and also set it up to be a little bit transparent so we can see our character, even if uh, it's covering her face a little bit there. The next block I need is a quote block, and that's actually found in the media blocks section. And I'll select quotes there. And I'm gonna customize this as well. I'm gonna choose a card so that again, we have that contrast. Uh, while I've got cards selected, I'm going to get rid of that drop shadow. I don't need a title. I'm going to keep the quote text start and end quotes, which is these icons that you see here. But I don't need the avatar, the avatar name as well. So we'll get rid of those. I'm going to have a default state for this quote, something that our learners will never see. So I'm just going to replace this text with default state and that's all I'm going to place there. We'll add the additional states uh, in a little bit here. The last block that we need to add is our button blocks so that we can move forward and backwards throughout the course. We are going to use force navigation here so I'm going to hide the next button so that learners won't see it when they first arrive on the slide and then that forces them to complete the interaction before moving forward. So let's add a button block. We'll go ahead and choose two buttons and we'll distribute them uh, uniformly across the slide here. In this case here, I think what I'm going to do is also make some small modifications to this block here so that it fills the remainder of a typical slide. So in this case here, we've got a little extra room here. Now, when we arrive on the slide, let's label these buttons first of all. This will be the back button here, and this will be the next button here. When we arrive on the slide, I don't want to see the next button. So you would use this control here, which allows you to hide during publish. So that's going to hide my next button. And also, I'm going to select this block here, but I don't actually want to select the block. I want to select the components that make up this particular card and the quotes and the default state for the quotes here. So the easiest way to do that is to make sure that you've got this selected here. And we just want to select quotes group one. And you can see it's highlighted on this slide. And that's the component that we're going to make not visible in output. We can test this out by doing a quick preview at this point to make sure that the quote caption as well as the next button are not visible. Now that I see this, of course, though, it reminds me that we have a play bar on this slide here. And, you know, while the user can move it around, I want to hide that because I don't want people to skip the slide uh, unless they've completed the interaction. So you can do that from the project properties here and we can hide the play bar and that way learners have to use the controls that you provide them instead here. So we're pretty much good to go here. The one thing we need to do is add our additional states and of course our options for the radio button block there. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So for option one, first of all, we need to select the normal state before we can edit it. For option one, we're going to have describe the behavior Option two will be express your feelings using I statements. Option three is specify the new type of behavior. And option four is identify the consequences. So let's select our default state text right here. We'll go back up to the regular view here in the properties inspector here. I do want to add a state here. So in this case here, this will be for step one, okay? And that will be the first statement our character makes. And I'll just paste that in. Alex, earlier you told a racially blah, 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 and sensitive joke. We'll add another state here. I'm just going to move this up on the slide a bit here. We'll add another state. And this will be for step number two. And our character will be saying, I'm offended by jokes like this, blah, blah, blah. And we'll add a third one. Now, sometimes this happens to me. I don't know if it happens to you. It adds two states at once. That's okay. I need two more states. But let's go ahead and edit this one to be step three. 
and we'll make sure we get the right text for that. And then this one here will be step four and we'll pop in the text for that there. So we'll just double check this here. Alex earlier told that, blah, blah, blah. I'm offended by jokes like the appreciate you stop telling jokes if this continues. Okay, so we have all of our steps, which the learner will click on here, and that looks good. So um, the first thing we need to do is select our radio button text element, the radio buttons themselves. I can turn off states. I don't need to see those right now, but we're going to go over to interactions here. Now with radio buttons, you can choose to have a set of actions for any selection. So regardless of what I choose, I could have it do various things. In this case, we, we are very specific as to what we want to have happen here. So we're gonna say selection of, and these are the four items that are available. So when we describe the behavior, when we click on this item here, we wanna see the first of our multi-states or first of our additional states here. So let's do that. And I need to perform a bunch of different actions. The first thing is, is that I need to pause the slide. I haven't added it yet, but I intend to add some slide audio. And we wanna make sure that if someone goes ahead and clicks one of the radio buttons, it's going to stop the playback of the slide audio. So what we need to do is choose pause the timeline. That's the first action that needs to be performed whenever we click on describe the behavior. I'm going to go ahead and click done. The next thing I want to do is I also want to stop any triggered audio that's already be, uh, being played from one of the other three radio buttons here. So we'll click on add new action and we'll go under more and we'll choose stop media. Click done. We're also going to need to show our quote down here. So let's make sure we do that because it might be the first item that we're selecting. Now I can choose one, any one of, or any number of individual objects, but this is actually a content section that we're looking for. And this is it right here. So we're going to show the quotes group, scroll down a bit, click next and done. Then we want to change the state of the text component within that to be for step number one. So click on add new action and we will set the state of our text number six to step number one. Scroll down a ways, click next and done. Finally, we have some audio that we wish to play that matches the text of this quote here. So we're going to add a new action go to more and play media. We'll click on browse and we'll go to step number one here and click okay. Click done. And now we have essentially our first advanced interaction for the first radio button here. Now, when I select these new ones, I do have to select a new action. So I'm going to choose pause timeline as the first action I set up. But to save me some time, I can select stop media, hold down my shift key and go all the way to the bottom where it says play media and select those items. And we can copy and paste those into the other selection actions to save ourselves some time. So let's copy those. But before I go away from this, I'm going to select, hold down my control key and select pause timeline as well. And we're going to merge these actions together. This has the effect of having all of these seeming to operate simultaneously. So it'll be very fast. There'll be no delay between any of these actions. All right, so let's go to step number two, which is expressing your feelings. We'll choose that. I will choose more and I'll choose pause timeline and click done. And you notice that there's a clipboard icon after pause timeline, and I can paste in all those actions I just copied. And all I need to do is change the state that we're going to be displaying from step number one to step number two, click next and done. And we're going to edit this 
from playing step 1.mp3 and we'll browse to what we want to play in this case, step number two, click open, and then done. So I saved myself a lot of clicks there by doing it that way. I'm going to select all these and again, like before, merge these into a single set of actions. Let's choose the third option, which is specify the new behavior, and we'll go into more, pause the timeline, done. And again, we'll paste in all our other stuff here. We'll scroll down a ways here, and we're going to edit the state to not be step number one. In this case, it's going to be step number three. Next and done. And scroll down a ways, and let's edit the audio clip. And we're going to choose step three here. Okay, click done. And like before, I'm going to merge these all together so that they happen simultaneously. I might have to scroll up to see that option, but there it is. And last but not least, identify the consequences. So we'll add the pause timeline action. And I'll add all my copied items there. And we'll edit which multi-state object we're going to show, in this case, step four. And we'll edit which audio clip we're playing here, which will be step four. Click done. And last but not least, let's make sure these are all merged together so they happen nice and quickly and all at once. And that takes care of pressing each of these buttons. So it'll work great. Uh, the one thing that we want to do, of course, is we, we, we need to add the audio for this slide. So I'm gonna click on the slide itself in my slides navigator. So we're gonna click on the audio icon and import the audio for this slide. And I have that labeled as slide 01.mp3. Click open. It wants to extend the display time to match the audio. Go ahead and press extend time and you'll see your timeline increases there. Uh, one of the things you might run into is sometimes objects don't appear for the entire duration of the slide. So uh, control E will allow you to extend those objects for the duration of the timeline. And you can see the audio by expanding the slide itself here. One of the things I like to do with slide audio is I'll place my playhead at the one second mark. I'll right click on the slide 01.mp3 and select start audio from playhead position and then go to the half second mark and do the same thing again. This has the effect of adding a half second of no sound at the end and of course at the beginning as well. Let's extend that as well so that we see that for the duration of the slide. Perfect. The only thing missing at this stage is how do we get the next button to appear once we've viewed all the states of our multi-state quote here. And that can be done if you click on the slide itself from the slide navigator, click on the interactions tab, and you'll see slide interactions and plus. These are slide level interactions that kind of are being looked for in the background here. So let's click plus and we can say custom states viewed. So once the custom states available for text number six, not the default state, but the custom ones, which are these four here, I just simply clicked on select all. Once they've all been viewed, we are going to show our next button and click next. And then done, of course. So we're pretty much good to test this out. I'm going to preview this slide. I'm going to purposely interrupt the slide before the slide narration finishes by clicking on one of my radio buttons here. And we'll hear all of them. And pay attention to the next button. Uh, only appearing once I've clicked on all four here. So let's go ahead and preview this. Here is an example of solving workplace discrimination or harassment. Alex, 
Earlier you told a racially insensitive joke here in the office. I am offended by jokes like this because it's demeaning to others. I would appreciate it if you would stop telling jokes that make fun of people's race. If this continues, I will have to speak to our manager or HR about it. And of course, now the next button has appeared and your learner can continue with the rest of the e-learning course. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.